Hello and welcome. My name is Sanjay Soni. Here is Ram Nandan, who will take us through how you can run operational analytics at planet scale on Azure Cosmos DB using Spark. Let's get started. Hi, Ram. How are you doing today? Hi, Sanjay. Great to have you with us. Thank you. So what do you do at Microsoft? I'm an engineer and product growth ninja on the Azure Cosmos DB engineering team primarily responsible for technical customer engagements and the growth of our service. So Ram, what are we going to talk about today? Sure. As you know, Azure Cosmos DB provides a fully managed, globally distributed, multi-model database service, powering a wide range of mission-critical work, operational workloads in various verticals, retail, manufacturing, IoT, gaming, fintech, and much more. But in this session, I want to talk more about how Cosmos DB makes it possible to build efficient architectures for operational analytics as well as even sourcing paradigms. Great topic. Can you please walk us through what operational analytics actually entails? Sure. So as we see this massive adoption of NoSQL systems by enterprises all across the world, one thing we notice is that these enterprises require the, uh, the NoSQL systems to support mixed workloads, which typically encompass both operational and analytics workloads on the same backend. Yes. Now, operational, anal operational workloads encompass day-to-day -day business transactions in real time. Think about uh, purchases, millions of purchases being made on an e-commerce website, mm -hmm. uh, m massive multiplayer online games like Forza, where game updates are happening, device telemetry coming from billions of sensors all across the world. Um, all of these are essentially what encompass operational workloads. And then you have in, uh, analytics workloads, which encompass uh, deriving business intelligence and insights out of that data. For example, analysts, an, an, an analyst wants to um, uh, aggregate purchases over a specific period of time. Now, in, in the past, we've noticed that uh, Enterprises used to have separate systems for operational workloads and analytics workloads. Yes. But going forward, they need a single data platform to support operations as well as analytics on the hot slash warm data. And this is where Spark comes in as well, because from the point of view of choice of analytics frameworks, Spark is really popular today and has a really large mindshare. Mm -hmm. Spark comes with uh, multiple options. You can do batch processing using Spark SQL. You can do stream processing using Spark Structured Streaming. And it also has a, a wide array of core libraries which support machine learning and graph processing. And this is the reason why we've built a native Spark connector for Cosmos DB. Great. So can you please tell us more about this native Spark connector for Cosmos DB? Sure. So before we get into that, let's talk about why Spark and Cosmos DB are a great match. So Spark, as you know, is a distributed compute platform where you can write analytics queries, um, which essentially, and the compute gets distributed across multiple executors on multiple worker nodes and are, and are processed in parallel. Now this makes it a great fit for Cosmos DB, which is a horizontally partitioned database where as you ingest data, it is sharded across multiple partitions. And this is essentially what uh, makes it possible for Cosmos DB to elastically scale with storage as well. So let's take a look at how the native Spark connector for Cosmos DB is built. So the Spark connector is nothing but a driver which you can um, include into your Spark runtime. And it essentially encodes the knowledge or mapping between Spark worker nodes and Cosmos DB data nodes. Um, so let's talk about both the read as well as the write path. So in the read path, let's take an example. Imagine you have five terabytes of data in Cosmos DB. Now Spark is an in-memory processing engine. So does that mean you would have to pull the entire five terabytes into memory in Spark to do your processing? Well, you could, but that would require a really large Spark cluster, which essentially points down to a very, uh, uh, to a very high cost as well as la uh, larger processing times. Mm -hmm. So that's where Cosmos DB comes in. In Cosmos DB Spark connector, we push down the predicates as well as filters down to the Cosmos DB query engine, where we natively utilize the Cosmos DB indexes to only retrieve the smaller subset of data back. So going back to that example, instead of bringing the entire five terabytes into memory in Spark, by pushing down the filters, as well as only retrieving, pushing down the predicates which you're interested in, you can only retrieve a few gigabytes into memory in Spark and process there. 
I see. And this is the read path. What about the write path? A lot of customers we notice write complex ETL processes in Spark uh, to ingest data. So with, we have essentially integrated the bulk executor library, which is an extension library for Cosmos DB, which enables extremely fast ingestion of data mm -hmm. while internally handling all transient exceptions. So this makes it super easy to, in, to ingest data into Cosmos DB using Spark, which we will go through in a, in a demo shortly. I see. So I know you work with lots of customers. So uh, what, what kind of architecture patterns does this enable? So the Lambda architecture, as you know, is a, is a fairly common architecture pattern for building real-time uh, big data processing pipelines. Of course. So the Lambda architecture enables uh, low latency reads and updates in a, in a linearly sc scalable and fault-tolerant way. And one other pattern which is really famous is the Kappa pattern. But in this session, we'll focus more on the Lambda pattern, but a lot of the ideas can be translated very easily to the Kappa pattern as well. So let's take a look at what a typical Lambda architecture looks like. So as new data comes into your system, you have a batch layer as well as a speed layer. Of course. So the batch layer essentially contains a master data set, which is an immutable append-only set of raw data. So the batch layer also contains a batch process, which is in the compute layer, which periodically retrieves a batch of data from the master data set. And this is where you encode your complex aggregations. Now the batch layer essentially has a con, which is because it includes complex aggregations, it, 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 takes, it has a high latency and processing time, which means it cannot be repeated at a very high frequency. Yeah, so it's the cold path. Yes. Uh, and so what about the hot path, which is if, what, if, what if I want to get aggregations and, and do real-time sliding window aggregations over the more recent data? Most generally, batch processes run nightly or once in a few hours. What if I want to look at the data within the last few seconds or minutes? Mm -hmm. That's where the stream process comes in. And in general, you would have to inject the new data into the stream layer as well and look at aggregations there. So the Lambda architecture also involves the serving layer. As, and as we said, once you do your complex aggregations, you store a pre-aggregated view in the serving layer, which is where your queries go and hit to retrieve your data. Mm -hmm. So what is the problem with this Lambda architecture? As new data comes in, uh, you have, you, there is a double write problem where you have to write to both your master data set as well as to your stream uh, speed layer. What if one of the writes fail? That's the, the common problem of double writes. And this is where Cosmos DB simplifies this Lambda architecture as well. So how does it do it? Cosmos DB change feed. Cosmos DB change feed is the secret sauce mm -hmm. which enables even driven patterns and simplifies the Lambda architecture. So what is this Cosmos DB change feed? As a fire hose of data comes into the Cosmos DB container, we present a persistent uh, ev event log view to the database, which is something which most other databases do not provide. Mm -hmm. What this means essentially is we provide you an API through which you can, you can access a persist, the persistent log of records within an Azure Cosmos DB container in the same order in which they were modified. Okay. So let's see how this happens now. So in, in, if, if you were to build the Lambda architecture with Cosmos DB and Spark, you do not have to write the data to a batch layer as well as to a separate uh, speed layer as the data comes in. All you do is you write it to the master data set, which is a single Cosmos DB container. And then in the batch layer, you can, you can write Spark SQL, which periodically retrieves data from Cosmos DB very efficiently, as we spoke about a little earlier, and pre-aggregate that data into, uh, into a, another container, which is what your serving layer is. Now, why you would do that is essentially Cosmos, once you have pre-aggregated your data at runtime, you can look up that data in single digit millisecond latency, which is where Cosmos DB really shines yeah. with its financially backed SLAs. And this is how you can achieve the whole batch and serving layer very efficiently. What about this speed layer? That's where change feed comes in. Basically, change feed allows you to subscribe to the data which was ingested in the master data set in real time, and you can use Spark structured streaming to encode your Spark 
logic and your aggregation logic. Most, most of the times we've noticed customers do sliding window aggregations over the last few seconds or minutes, while the batch job encodes more of uh, complex aggregations which are done every at the end of every night or every few hours. And that's where also you potentially include a lot of, uh, you pass it through machine learning models or build propensity models, which take time as well, which cannot be done in real time. So this is how the Lambda architecture can be uh, materialized on Cosmos DB very, with much lesser moving parts and total, much lower total cost of ownership. I see. So can we please see a live demo? Sure. So today let's consider a smart building scenario. And for the sake of this demo, let's, let's consider two types of sensor within this smart building, a temperature and a carbon dioxide sensor. Okay. And so this is um, a, a one-click deployment reference architecture we have published. You can look at the source code here, which shows you how you can build scalable IoT data processing pipelines on Azure using Cosmos DB. For this session, let's not focus on how you ingest that data into Event Hub and you can potentially do pre-processing and schema, pro uh, schema conversions in Azure Functions. We have the source code there and you can take a look. Uh, but let's focus on the Lambda architecture part. Now, in, let's look at uh, the demo here. So in this scenario, let's, you have your, uh, a fire hose of sensor data coming into Cosmos DB in the raw data collection, and this is how the data would look like. This is raw data, and you're just appending it as, as, as fast as it comes in. So it's coming from those temperature sensors, CO2 sensors? Yes. Okay. So in this scenario, you can see here that it's essentially, you have your event payload, which is a temperature sensor with its value and when it was created at. Yes. Now, you have a periodic Spark batch processing job, which retrieves this data and wants to do aggregation. How does that look like? So as I said, in Cosmos DB, when you're using the Spark connector, reading and querying data is, is just a single line of code. So as you can see here, all you have to do is write configuration of which Spark Cosmos DB container you want to target. And all you have to do to read that data is this single line of code. And then you can also potentially write, a, you can do events.filter, uh, push down predicates, and that automatically gets pushed down to Cosmos DB. So in, the, in, in this uh, notebook, what we see here is we calculate, we just, uh, once we've read the data, we look at how many events we've, we have in the master data set. We have around 6.6 .6 million events. And then we look at what does the data look like? This is how the data looks like here. And we, what we want to do here is calculate the average carbon dioxide emission across all the sensor data we have, and basically create an aggregated view and write it down to the materialized collection. Okay. Again, writing to Cosmos DB using Spark is, all you have to do is define the config map of which Cosmos DB container to hit, and then all you have to do is, again, a single line of code, dataframe.write, and we know how to efficiently ingest that data into Cosmos DB. So if we look at how the data looks in the materialized view, this is how it looks like. So for every device ID, we have calculated what its average value is. Mm -hmm. So although you have 6.6 .6 million events, you have only 2,000 um, uh, records here in the materialized view, which is equal to the number of sensors. And if you're building a web portal, you can do a, a one millisecond lookup to, to retrieve this data from Cosmos DB at the P50. Uh, percentile. Wow. And just to uh, round it out, what about the speed layer? Again, you can, once you've defined which Cosmos DB container you want to target, you can efficiently retrieve, subscribe to the data using change feed. As you can, again, a single line of code, you can do spark.readstream to efficiently read that data. You can do, you can modify the schema, as you can see here. You can, and you can also do sliding window aggregations. Again, here we do, we, we look at what the average value is within the smaller window, and this is how it looks like. In this scenario, as you can see, we are sending around 1,000 events per second into Cosmos DB, and that is essentially equal to what the, uh, the, the processing rate on Spark structured streaming is as well. Great, so we're showing Azure Databricks and Cosmos DB in the same uh, Azure Databricks notebook here. Yes. Awesome. Thanks, Ram, for this awesome demo. So are there any uh, interesting patterns that customers can follow when they target both operational and analytical workloads in the same container? That's a great question. Uh, one of the patterns we've observed is that customers can add an additional region to a Cosmos DB container and dedicate that 
to, to, to pure analytics workloads. Okay. This now allows you to dedicate throughput in one region to your hot operational workloads, and you can utilize Cosmos DB's out-of-the-box automatic replication feature to now have a dedicated region with its own uh, throughput provision for your analytics Thank use you. scenarios. Wow, that sounds exciting. Now, where can customers go to find more information about all this? Sure. I would highly recommend the viewers to get their hands dirty uh, with this Cosmos DB Spark connector. And here are some useful resources. You can take a look at the documentation, the source code, which is open source on GitHub, as well as access the connector directly by downloading it from the public Maven repository. Fantastic. Thank you so much for all this great information. Thank you for having me, Sanjay. Thank you for watching this microlearning readiness video about Azure Cosmos DB. To learn more about this and other topics, please go to azure.com forward slash Cosmos DB. Please stay tuned for more videos.